Well, hello there. I'm Nigella Arthur, and today I'll be baking some beautiful bread buns. Ooh. Yum, 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 tasty! Right, today I'm in the kitchen, and I'm going to be showing you exactly how I make my baked liquidized bread. Now, um, it's standard liquidized bread, and I'm baking it in the oven. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to show you how I do it, and why I do it and hopefully I'm going to get out on the bank and show you how it actually works as well. Now I've always got leftover bread, there's always bits and, bits and bobs at the bottom of the uh, bags going off stale or I've got leftover slices from a fishing session. Um, even when I've punched and all my holes out rather than chuck it to the duck sometimes I bring all those slices home and I'll grind them up and bake them in the oven and I'll make a beautiful white powder fine ground bait like this. Now uh, obviously you can get white crumb, you can get liquidized bread, you can get punch crumb, all different things in the shops and, uh, and you can make your own liquidized bread. But this for me is what I like to use on the canals and still waters especially. The beauty of this, firstly because it's got no moisture in it whatsoever, um, it will keep forever. It will keep for years. Um, as long as you keep it airtight and that, it won't go off. There's nothing to go off because there's no moisture in that, you've killed it all in the oven. It means it's ever so easy to use. I can just bring it to the bank, mix it up, and it knocks up in seconds as well. Um, it doesn't bind. For some reason, I think the baking process takes out a lot of the binding properties out of it. So um, that's why it's perhaps not so good on the rivers or the flowing waters, but what you can do is use it as an additive. You can actually add an amount of this to punch crumb or, or, or feeder mixes or anything like that and it will actually help it break down as well because it doesn't bind whatsoever. I'll hopefully show you some of that in a bit. But you can also get it the exact shade you want it by how long you bake it in the oven as well. It will start off nice and white but it will go a, a yellow and then a golden brown and really brown depending on how much you uh, bake it or burn it. So, um, But that's, all, that's what we're going to do today. And like I said, hopefully I'm going to take you out on the bank and show you exactly how easy it is to catch with it as well. We're in January now and the fishing is not, not easy, but it's perfect bread weather. So we should be able to catch a few fish on this anyway, even in the highest of conditions. So uh, I do use liquidized bread, I do use punch crumb, but this stuff is what I do like to take to the bank and mix up and knock up because it's so good. It really, really is good stuff. Um, and I've been using it for years and years and years. So, um, but anyway, without further ado, let's show you how we do it. All right, this is what we're aiming to get, a nice powder fine white bread feed. Okay, that's all it is. Smells absolutely beautiful as well. And another advantage of this, I must add, is you know what's in it. There's nothing else in it. There's no floor scrapings, there's no biscuit, there's nothing claggy, there's no cake, there's nothing, it's bread. Because that's all I put in it, is, is sliced bread. Crust and all, I don't subscribe to the theory that crusts fill up fish more than the white, because once a particle's the same size, it, it doesn't matter really. So anyway, what we need is a liquidizer or a blender um, and some leftover bread. Now I've already started some off there. There's only probably eight or nine slices um, in total gonna go in there. But I just rip it up into quarters, like, like so. Rip it up into quarters, drop it in on, and, uh, and blend away like that. Now this blender is pretty old, pretty battered, pretty rubbish actually. The blades are pretty blunt, so it doesn't blend it as nicely, as finely, as um, as some some blenders out there, but also that doesn't actually matter too much because I'm going to be baking it anyway. So any of the big bits I can grind down after it's baked as well. So uh, I'm not too fussed. It's not the best of blenders, but it works. It does the job. <laughs> So you've got some quite big bits in there, hopefully you can see in that. But um, the more I blend it, obviously the more that will go. Um, I'm gonna do a few more, a few more slices. I hope I don't have to do another take of this because I haven't got any bread left. But, <laughs> but everything, crust and all, definitely a liquidizer crust. I can't see any point in wasting perfectly good bread. I don't think crusts do fill up fish any more than anything else. As long as you get it nice and powder fine. So that's that, put that out of the way. And that's good old wool, but you can use out any old bread, cheap bread, a lot of people would use even cheaper bread for liquidizing, but I just use whatever's left over. Right, 
Right, so that's a bit of a blast in the uh, in the blender. Take that out. Take my uh, very blunt blades out. And uh, all we do now, I've got a baking tray, just an old baking tray. I'm just going to spread it out. In... Doesn't have to be too precise. You can see that my blender's not very good. I actually do get quite a lot of big bits. Um, the more stale the bread is, obviously the finer it will go as well. But um, my blender's just not very good. A lot of people's liquid ice are be better than mine. Um, it doesn't really matter. So all I'm going to do now is pop that in the oven at about 150, 160 degrees. You don't want it too hot because it will bake too quickly on the top and, and you need to be able to keep um, stirring it to get a nice even bake. <laughs> Sound like a celebrity bake up or something now, but that's what we're after anyway. Um, and we don't want a stodgy bottom as uh, Mary Berry might say. So uh, let's put it in the oven. All right, I haven't preheated this purely because I didn't want the noise of the oven in the background so i'm just going to pop it in the oven and then i'm going to set it to about what's it 150 160 and whack it on right and all you have to do now is just leave it and go back to it in 10 15 minutes that's it see it in there baking away but whilst that's baking away i'll show you exactly uh, how it mixes up and compare it to other feeds and hopefully try and show it in a glass of water as well and see how it behaves so um, i've got several bowls here one is a um, conventional white um, crumb that i've mixed up um, and as you can see it's, it's it's pretty stodgy and it's congealing the more i squeeze it the more it's congealing and becoming like a dough yeah and that's not really what i want it does have its advantages when it's like that, it obviously means you can squeeze it, it'll go down, but um, it obviously doesn't break up so well as well. So white crumb is very problematic for mixing up. Um, you could lose a good half a bag in the mixing process just from all the lumps you'll get afterwards. But it can be a nice feed, and you, but you have to be very, very careful with how you mix it up. An atomizer and a drill whisk are probably the best way to do it. Um, but it still has its uses, especially on rivers and drains. Um, now these two are my mixes. Um, one's been baked longer than the other, so that's why this is a lovely golden brown shade, absolutely golden. And then this one hasn't been baked so long, but it's still a lovely, uh, lovely nice sort of yellowy white shade. You can make it a lot lighter, it just depends how long you're baking for, but I quite like it like that. Um, and I don't mind if it goes as, as brown as this, um, you'll still catch on bread over that. And also it's a good addition to normal brown crumb as well, because obviously it helps you mix bread down um, ever so fastly. Well, I say obviously, it's not obvious, but if you saw what I did there, I can squeeze that. This is white punch crumb, look at that, it's gone into a dough, horrible. This is my brown crumb, with it exactly the same. I can squeeze that as hard as I can. See that? And it will not bind, will not bind whatsoever. Throw bread from there. I'm squeezing that, see that? I'm squeezing it ever so hard. It just will not bind. So that's a, a very, very good property. You can use it as an additive or you use it on its own. I love using it on canals and still waters um, and shallow sort of venues for that. So uh, let's get some of this. This is some of my, that I've already done. I'll just wet it up, a tiny smidgen of water. Just see how it mixes up. And soon, very, very quickly, it turns from a quite a gritty sort of mix to a very very soft and fluffy mix softer than than sort of conventional ground meat really it just goes very much like white fluffy breadcrumbs but there you are that's done no riddle no lumps no nothing in there it's just done so i can carry a bag of this knock it up and it's done now this one I was, i'm going to mix a bit sloppier because this is how i really like to feed it a lot of the time see how that's just slopped up but there's no congealed lumps in there at all. It's a beautiful sloppy mix. And I often feed it like that. There's nothing worse than um, seeing dry bread being fed and that big haze on the surface just spreading out. It's just horrible to see because that's, that's doing your swim no good. I want my bait to go in and go down. I don't want anything floating on the top. So uh, let's just wash our hands. Give them a bit of a dry. So there you are, there's my two feeds. What we're gonna do, we're gonna hold it in a glass of water. Get this camera to show me, there we are. Got 
got a new GoPro, so I thought I'd do it on my GoPro than my, uh, my bigger cameras today. So I'm going to grab some of that. Nice. Half oh, getting hand in the bowl. So there's a squeeze ball like that. And there's a glass of water. It's going to go straight down. Look at that for a beautiful cloud. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and uh, obviously all nice fine particles there as well. That's not going to fill the fish up, but when they come in, it will, it will eventually, after 30 seconds, it will be inactive, completely settled, and the fish will just kick that up. And I think that's the beauty of liquidized bread fishing or bread fishing in general. Once the fish are there, they kick it up. They're creating that cloud. That's where you catch off the bottom a lot with bread as well. So, uh, but look, that's almost all settled on the bottom there now already. Beautiful. So uh, let's have a look, see what the uh, what the sloppy stuff does. I was a bit more prepared, I could have done two glasses. There we are. So, there's my sloppy feed. I can really squeeze that, nothing's happened to that at all. It's just, you see all the moisture coming out? It's not congealing or anything. Now, because it's sloppy, it sometimes hangs in the water a little bit, but then it should sink straight down. Let's have a look. Oh no, straight down, there you are. Look at that for a... <laughs> There you are, and that's breaking down. Slight ball, boom, that's it, nice and flat there. But it's still a bit of a cloud up there as well. So, uh, and I'm sure, if a, once a fish goes in and kicks out, that will really keep that cloud up in the water as well when they're feeding. Um, but that's beautiful. It's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to go straight down and, um, and just be a lovely, attractive bit of bread feed. So there we are, there's my two mixes. Mix it however you want it, on the normal side, shall we say. How I really love to feed bread is on the sloppy side, because that sticks to a pot lovely as well, so it's not going to bounce out. You just go boom, straight in, and uh, absolutely brilliant. So uh, let's have a look at, that's my bread feed. Let's have a look at my baked bread and just see how it's coming on. Oh yeah, that's looking nice now. Ooh, steam coming out, steaming up my glasses. You can see it's just getting that little light yellowy tinge to it on the top. You see that's what happens, it comes up in, in crust but that soon breaks back down. You see that, it sort of clicks together like that. Obviously I'm being very very careful, I've been doing this for years so I know I can go straight in and touch this baked bread but be very careful if you're going to do it yourself. This is all breaking and it will break down beautiful. So what I generally do is agitate it and the more crusty it gets the more I will break it up sometimes with like a, even a potato masher or something I'll, I'll tend to break it up but that's fine that can go back in for another five minutes now I have made the mistake of putting it on too high a heat and now all you just end up doing is getting a real burnt crust on it and it goes browner a lot quicker than what you want so the lower the heat the, the slower the bake the less the more white it will stay or the whiter it will stay We'll just keep going back to it every five or ten minutes and keep breaking up that crust, rotating it all and getting a nice even bake. Yes. Starting to cling together again now. You often get little bits like that, big bits. All you want to do is break those up. Just get my potato masher. Doesn't matter what you use, but I've got a little potato masher that I uh, like to use. Helps break the bits apart, but also gives it a nice stir and mix up. You can see it's starting to go a little bit yellow. Obviously, if you put the crust off completely, then it'd go even whiter, but I don't want to waste any of that. Back in the oven. Right, it's definitely done now. Oh yes, turn the oven off. We'll shake around. Right, we'll put it to one side and we'll just let it cool off now. It's all nice and cool now. It doesn't take long to cool off. But that's all my uh, nice dried breadcrumbs. And uh, you can crush a lot of it in your hands. You can actually see it. You can actually feel it's quite satisfying just crushing it all in your hands. But uh, what I generally do, 
Uh, I don't need the uh, potato masher anymore. I'm just going to uh, tip it all into a smaller top. Nice fine bits in. There we are. Put that away. Don't need that now. Don't need that. Right, now what I do um, now is just sieve it. But what I like to do is you use a metal sieve, you can actually rub the bigger bits through as well. So compared to a plastic sieve, it's not as, not as effective, but if you get a nice metal sieve, you can almost grate it through. Um, now you could use a coffee grinder as well. I have actually got a coffee grinder in the uh, garage somewhere, but I tend to use that just for my uh, pellets and fish meal. I don't really want to get fish meal and fishiness on my uh, stuff, but you could certainly use a coffee grinder. You could pop, pop it back through a blender. I'm sure that'd help it get finer as well, but what I just do is just, just whack it through a, a metal sieve and then uh, as much of it through there as possible. Probably put too much in to begin with. Yeah, I'll put too much in. Silly boy. There you are. So that's just going to go through. There's all the nice fine bits already. And then the rest of it, I just personally just work through with my fingers. I will be left with some bigger bits that are no good, but I just find it grinds through nice because it's a metal set. So I'll just carry on doing that. Obviously, a coffee grinder would be as good, if not better. But for what for the amount that I'm using, the amount I'm doing, I'm more than happy to just force it through a metal sieve. There you are. Here yeah, I've got some bigger bits, but yeah, they can be ground back down or chucked away, whatever you fancy. But that's what you're left with there. Beautiful. Oh, it smells beautiful as well. Beautiful bread feed. And that is. 100% bread, 100% Warburton's bread as well, which is my favourite for putting on the hook. And um, just, you can't go wrong with stuff like that. You know what's in it, you know what it is, and I know how good it is. So let's go out, mix them up, and catch some fish of it. Well, I don't think I could have asked for worse conditions. The canal's extremely chocolate coloured. We're gonna give it a go, see if we can catch on bread in coloured water. I've proven on the, uh, well I grew up fishing the canal around Rugby and Leamington and, and places like that and uh, the canal was always coloured and uh, you're still caught on, caught on bread so it's not necessarily a clear water bait. Certain venues I know have proved that but we're just going to knock some up quick. It's almost doubled in volume, well it has doubled in volume already. But, um, Pretty much every section of canal I've looked at is chocolate and absolutely ripping through in places. So uh, this is the best of a bad bunch. That's it, that's going to be enough. Mix it on the almost a sloppy size, so it's just nice and damp. I don't want it really sloppy today, I just want it nice and damp so it all sinks. And that's more than enough for, for today. I can always mix some more if I need it. I'm going to feed two swims. One at six sections, one at seven sections. It's a real steep incline, so um, I'm going to fish in two foot of water and four foot of water. I'd like to fish in three foot of water, but it's just too steep there. So, uh, so I'm going to hedge my bets and fish them both. So uh, don't need that now. Screw me pot on, and uh, oh, I must add, it's it's uh, gone. It's probably half two now, so uh, we've not got a lot of time. I'm going to feed about a satsuma on each. Now my two foot swims just slightly to my left, which I, I always find it easier to to, uh, to ship that way. And then my four foot swim is straight in front. So about that much. We've still got a little bit left if we need to top up. Two swims. I could have fed a short swim as well, but I haven't really got the time for that. And I just want to show you if we can catch on it in the worst possible conditions. <laughs> so, plop. Straight down. Lovely. Let's have a look at the rig. The rig is simplicity itself. 
I've got a number three elastic and that's what I prefer on a canal when it's hard with nice fine hooks and when you're after roach and stuff so a three is perfect um, I've set it at four foot and two foot same rig one rig to do them both Tipex mark there Tipex mark there <laughs> just lazily using one rig but there's some I don't have any problem doing anyway it's a butchered um, point three ultimate flow I've got a one uh, one mil solid bristle there solid plastic bristle wire stem and um, that's on uh, 011 line and I've got an 08 hook length and a 20 fine wire hook and just strung out number 11s, one, two, three, four, five, six number 11s in the bottom half. That's it. I've got a slice of bread out, so let's just get some punches out. Let's just get the four and the five mil out to begin with and uh, we'll take it from there. All right. We'll go into the, uh, the shallower swim first because that's the swim I fed first. I'm just gonna fish it just off bottom to begin with. Put a five mil punch on to begin with. Don't compress it or anything to start with. I prefer it nice and fluffy. Don't mind if the occasional bit comes off on the way, on the way out, because I just think you hit more bites when it's the softest and fluffiest and uncompressed as possible. So let's go. I'm gonna start in two foot pure because that's the swim I fed first. Um, when it's this coloured, I don't think it matters too much. But this is a real acid test today because you couldn't ask for worse conditions than this for fishing bread in. <laughs> uh, so we'll see if we can catch in it or not. <laughs> well, there we are. We've actually caught first chuck, little tiny roach. You can see how confident I was or wasn't because I haven't even put my keep net in yet. So uh, let's put my keep net in. Try and catch another one then. That was on uh, that was on a five mil punch as well. A tiny little roach. It sort of drifted off sideways. To be honest, I even stopped recording for a little bit because I thought, well, there's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna get a bite after a minute. But I did. <laughs> so let's lay it in again. I'm gonna leave it recording this time. Well, good. Full of optimism. Amazing what one little roach does for you. Just for your optimism. I think we'll get a few fish now. They might all be little plips. But at least the bread's working and it's really coloured horrible water. I suppose you could fish pinkies or worms or maggots or something in this as well. And you'd catch some fish. But this is all about bread fishing today. And like I said, we used to fish the canal around rugby all the time, and that was always coloured, and yet it was famous for its bread anglers. So uh, don't let the colour put you off. They're still eating it, and they just perhaps can't see it so easily. But a roach that size on a four mil punch, and, and uh, on a five mil punch isn't bad going. <laughs> oh, another bite. Oh, that's better. A bit bigger. I'm glad I used the number three elastic because. Oh, yeah. There we are. Second cast. <laughs> Brilliant. That's on five mil. Let's try it. See if we can get a quicker bite on a four mil. Four mil punch now. 20 hook. Oh, wait. I'd like to fish a bigger hook if I can with bread. Fishing squat and pinky, I'd have a 22 or a 24 on, but I think with bread, I'll put a 22 on if it's hard and a 20 or even an 18 if it's good. Oh, made up two bites, two fish. Let's see if we can get some quality ones. If I can catch 20 fish, I think that'll be more than enough evidence to show the bread in action, really, and the bread working its magic. He's on a bad stamp. Happy with those in winter on a canal. <laughs> right, that's three in, three drops on that uh, deeper on the shallower line. Let's just push it up and just see if there's anything anything bigger on the uh, on the other line. Let's take that section off. Oh, three bites, three fish. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Start off on the five mil again. There it goes. 
Oh, that's better. They're often slightly bigger in the, in the deeper water. Might even have to net this. I will have to net it. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. And there we are, fish number four. I think it's a good three or four ounce. I'd say it's three ounce from you. That's in the deeper water. It's easy to ask, you know, why did you come off if you was getting bites in the shallow water? But I did think if I was catching there, I'd every chance of catching something bigger in the deeper water. That's how I was proved right. Got four mil punch on now. My sort of go-to size for roach of all sizes. If there were skimmers about, I fish five, maybe even a six mil punch. The four mil seems to be the optimum size on most canals of fish. Well, I'm waiting a little bit for bites, but I've had four bites. Well, four drop-ins, four bites, four fish. So, 100% uh, success rate so far. And all on the bread I liquidised up yesterday. I tend to find with bread, fishing off bottoms better. But most sessions I will always try going over depth, under depth, dead depth, inch off, anything up to six inches off. Probably the same amount over depth because every day is a little bit different. And you do catch different fish depending on how you lay your rig in and how deep you fish. Just going to drag it, induce a little bit of movement into it. Yeah. <laughs> that dragging definitely works. This feels like a good fish as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Biggest one of the lot, and that's some dragging it. And it must be just sat there. That's a quality roach in the deeper water on the bread basically every fish I've had so far has got bigger fifth fish five bites five fish Well, there we are. Proof of the pudding, shall we say. Absolutely awesome. Some clonking roach like that. Some little babbies in there as well. Two or three pound of roach in 90 minutes fishing. So uh, definitely think a decent weight could have been on the cars if I had fished all day, but that's all we've come out for. And look, two slices of bread. That's all I've used. Actually, one slice, two halves of bread. And uh, we still got loads of bread feed left as well. So uh, if that doesn't prove that my baked bread works, then I don't know what does. Let's tip these back. And these two halves, they're gonna go back in the blender to make even more of this feed. <laughs> 
please like and subscribe if you want more. Thank you very much.